Keeping kosher is one of the many mitzvahs which were given to us in the Torah. It is the responsibility of the Jewish woman because she is the woman of valor, the balabu home. <laughs> Rabbi, tell me, what do we do first? Well, first we'll go to your food closet. The most important thing before we even start is to separate the kosher food from the non-kosher food. For example, you have a can of chicken here, which is obviously not kosher. It has no rabbinic supervision, manufactured by a non-Jewish company, you would have to dispose of it. Now you have to transform the kitchen itself into a kosher kitchen. There are many steps involved, but I'd like to first acquaint you with the basic principle involved. I should even quote the Hebrew that we use in the Talmud and in our codes. The Hebrew phrase is kabolo kach polto. As it absorbs, so must it emit. Meaning that in the same fashion in which a particular utensil became non-kosher, in that way it has to be kosher. In that way do we render it kosher. For example, if something was cooked on water in a pot and you cooked a non-kosher food in it, you cooked a piece of bacon in a pot. So what do you do with that pot to make it kosher? What you have to do is you have to cook it kosher. You have to kosher it. Also, again, through cleansing, purification, through boiling water. Uh, this general principle of Kabbalah Kachpolta will guide all our thinking. The Torah prohibits the eating of meat and milk together. And also, those utensils that are used for meat are not permitted to be used for dairy. Therefore, we have what is known as different dishes for different foods. For meat, a person is supposed to have one set of dishes. For dairy, a second set of dishes. And observant Jews have even a third set that's known as power of neutral, which is neither meat nor dairy. How does one do this in practice. Very simply stated, when a person sets up a kosher home, you have to have silverware, dishes, pots and pans that are to be used exclusively for one or the other. Similarly, when you wash these dishes, they have to be washed in particularized fashion so that when you be washing your dishes here, you should have a special mat in the sink itself with a distinct color, whether it's blue or red, blue for meat, red for dairy. Similarly, here where you're going to hold your dishes, it should be exclusively either for the meat or for the dairy, because you're not supposed to use one for the other. There has to be a separateness, distinctiveness, and you have to keep them apart in the cooking, in the preparation, and in the cleansing. We have to kosher, which means convert and transform non-kosher utensils to kosher, the stove, the frigidaire, the sink, the ovens, and it's intricate, but it can be done. Naturally, you need the guidance of your rabbi. The oven has to be cleaned thoroughly. I would recommend that you use Easy Off. First you wash it down with soap, then use Easy Off. After that, you have to heat up the oven in such a way so that any non-kosher food or taste that may have gotten into the walls of the oven, that may have been absorbed, will be emitted through this direct heat onto the walls and the essence of the oven itself, including the gratings and the side of the oven as such. The same thing with the top of the stove. Top of the stove also has to be washed down thoroughly and then easy off, because easy off would naturally give it that very sharp and taut cleansing that it needs. And then you would allow it to be heated to such an